Obsolescence is the state of being which occurs when an object, service, or practice is no longer wanted, even though it may still be in good working order. It is a prominent feature of our modern economy, and it's generally preferable to us, the consumers. For example, digital cameras came out in the 1980s and replaced film cameras. This is called technological obsolescence. Simply put, digital cameras are just technically more advanced. Another example we use every day would be the USB. As the name suggests, USB replaced many unstandardized serial and parallel ports, which were used in the old days. This is called functional obsolescence. In the first example, adoption of digital cameras brought about convenience and lowered cost of video production. In the second example, USB standardized computer connections and made our lives a lot easier. It is not hard to see that obsolescence in those cases is generally a good thing. It is a byproduct of innovation, and you guys know how much I love innovation. Although by definition we're throwing away older versions of a product, we're doing so to improve our productivity and hence generate more value for our society. Despite my talking about innovations in almost all my videos, this is not what I want to talk about today. Quite the opposite. I want to talk about the evilest. Obsolescence of all, planned obsolescence. Planned obsolescence is the dark side of innovation that people seldom talk about. It refers to the act of planning or designing a product with an artificially imposed useful life. Artificially being the keyword here. The famous American industrial designer Brock Stevens called planned obsolescence the act of instilling in the buyer the desire to own something a little newer. A little better, a little sooner than is necessary, and I have no problem with it because, as a consumer, I'm given full information. Whether or not I would buy the product is based on my desire of that product. Therefore, this is not what makes planned obsolescence undesirable. The part of planned obsolescence I'm not happy with is when the manufacturer purposely hide information that would affect my purchasing decisions. Until very recently, it was a seldomly discussed industry norm. Have you ever wondered why your smartphone began to slow down after a few years of use? I have many viewers of mine messaging me on Twitter asking me if I know why their smartphones start to slow down a few months after purchase. Here's the answer: planned obsolescence. Apple's recent battery scandal gives us some great insights into this problem. What's going on with these older iPhones? Why is Apple slowing them down? Good morning, Pamela. Cena Money now counts five different class action lawsuits. Basically, iPhone、uh, Apple rather finally came forward and said what many people had suspected for a long time: that when you update to the newest versions of iOS on the following phones, let me just list them for you so you can see if your phone is one of the ones that's affected: the iPhone 6, 6s, SE, and iPhone 7, that they slow your usage down. But Apple says it's not for the reason that many are accusing them of. They say it's because there's actually an issue. Issue with the battery in these phones. After a lot of usage, the battery can surge, and that causes the phone to shut down. A problem that many of Apple denied exercising planned obsolescence, of course. But the sheer fact that it did not even bother to inform its customers about this change is a testament to the prevalence of planned obsolescence in the mobile industry. Indeed, our smartphones are not designed to work forever in the first place. Many budget manufacturers use materials of lower quality to control the cost of the film. For example, when manufacturers make a smartphone, there is this process called wire bonding, which uses one of the following materials to make interconnections between an integrated circuit and its packaging. Gold is the preferred material among them, which will give the product a longer lifespan. However, many budget smartphone manufacturers decide to use copper instead to save cost. As a customer, we would not feel the effect when we first start to use the phone. But as the product ages, the one built with copper lags significantly more than its counterpart built with gold. This is the opportunity cost of buying a cheaper smartphone. So going back to the question asked in the title, why do our smartphones slow down after a while? Well, it was never meant to work forever. Perhaps because of the components' deterioration, perhaps due to the wear and tear of the phone itself, it is designed to be obsolete in a few years' time. I'm okay with all of that. However, whatever the reason might be, our phones should never slow down because its manufacturer made a decision to slow it down for us. Hey, 
Thank you all very much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you are not a subscriber yet, consider subscribing because I make really awesome content pretty frequently. Also on this topic of planned obsolescence, perhaps the one I hated the most is college textbooks. I remember when I was in college, I had to buy so many of them every semester for hundreds of dollars, which I hardly use. To make things even worse, professors publish a new edition every year to prevent us from selling our textbooks to our juniors. What a great business model. All right, that's it. Let me know your views on planned obsolescence in the comment down below. As always, I'm Lei. I'll catch you guys later.